And welcome back. So, last episode, we basically just went through the intro. Our part, We shot our partner up high on the top of a building. Uh, he's dead, uh, but he's now living inside of our brain. He's more or less the narrator, but we can communicate and talk with him. Oh, when um, you say it's time for... So? Right. Brooding detective. What are you talking? Never mind. And this is our bedroom. We've already searched everything. There's nothing good here except for our drugs are in there. Bill doesn't like our drugs because Bill goes away when we take our drugs. Well, look who's awake. Ready to rejoin the living? Very much so. It must be our wife. You were talking in your sleep again. Did I say anything interesting? Do you ever? <laughs> you have to admit, she's got you there. How are you feeling? A touch groggy. I think I took a bit too much of the soporific last night. That's soporific! When you went for your after lunch nap, you'd barely gotten breakfast down. I saved you some bread and cheese if you're hungry. Thank you, but I haven't got much of an appetite. You really should regulate your doses more carefully, love. I'm sure dull senses and an empty stomach aren't much help to your work. By the <laughs> way, a message arrived via courier for you this morning. I put it on the table along with today's newspaper. Thank you, dear. Nice. Let's if look around. If there's a scissors or a hairbrush in Adelaide's hands, you can bet there'll be a book. It might do you some good to look in the mirror a bit more often, Miles. Yeah. I always liked that painting. It's Just trying to say we're ugly. Kind of scenery here in the city. You remember how much time Adelaide had to spend convincing you to sit for this? At least these days, with ferrotype tech advancing the way it is, these portraits can be done in just a matter of minutes. Yeah. <laughs> How are your parents doing these days? Pictures. It's been ages since you wrote them. Didn't I give you two that clock as a wedding present? Too bad it stopped working. Yeah, because you gave it to me. Your book collection has always astonished me. Heaven help you if you ever decide to move. Yeah, it your looks like you're not helping us, though, Bill. Astonished me. Heaven help you if you ever decide to move. Adelaide's father certainly had an amazing life. Imagine being the personal barber to the Prime Minister and his family. The gossip and secrets he must have heard. That makes me wonder what old Mrs. Handbrook is up to these days. <laughs> Building those model ships was a good way to pass the time between cases. Hopefully it'll be a while before you get enough time to build another one. Yeah, that's true. Let's keep busy. We can head right to the door. I'd love to see the look on Snelling's face if he ever found out you kept your old truncheon. Ah, the Havisham case. Our first time out as partners. First in a long line of successful cases. It's nice to have a memory of the good old days. The uh, good old days. Bollingworth Ale. My favorite. And a nice souvenir from the Angel. You really ought to go back there someday. It's been so long since you used that desk. Did you even notice when Adelaide got rid of the chair? Uh, let's take a look at the newspaper first. Remembering the HMS Ligia. This Tuesday, March 30 month anniversary, tried to crash. All 300 people on board. Wow, we just missed that. And 54 bystanders. Wow. Madame Dupree died Saturday, very natural causes. This is an eighth, eighth inch, eighth, what is that? Eighth history, eighth wrist, I can't fucking say it. Second bizarre murder, Bevel's police. They look for both victims of male and both died from gunshot wounds. Fordham, a big case has come in, which I think will interest you. Meet me at the Ruin Cafe House for more details. Hmm. Upton says she's got a big case for me. Does she go into any more detail than that? No, but then you know Upton. Always on a need-to-know basis. Especially since she's been giving me these cases under the table. To be fair, they haven't exactly been anything of note. True, but she's still sticking her neck out for me. I can understand why she's so secretive about it. I think she just misses having you around the station. Poor Connie. 
With you quitting and me dying, she must be bored stiff at work. Anyway, I'm supposed to meet her at the Ruin Coffee House. That Ruin. Right. It's not like Constance to make mistakes. She must have gotten in somehow. Guess I'll head over there and see what she's got then. Meet up then at the Ruin House. All right. Well, let's talk to our wife. Daddy? Yes, dear. How are you? It feels as though we haven't seen much of each other these past few days. I've been fine. Addie, you're not a very good liar. What's on your <laughs> mind? <laughs> Spill it, woman. I'm worried about you, Miles. Oh, I'm fine. I know, but I've told you, there's no need to worry about me. I'm all right. I'm good. You're not all right, I'm good. Miles. I may not be a good liar, but you can't fool me either. I am all right. What do I have to do to convince you of that? You mm -hmm. could start by throwing out that sleeping medicine. It's turned you into a different person. I need it to sleep, Addie. I'll become an even worse person without it, believe me. I know Bill's death was hard for you. It was hard for all of us. But whatever oh, it is that's go there. you, you know you can talk to me about it. That's what I'm here for. I, I know, my love. Your support means the world to me. I need some time to deal with things. That's all. It won't always be like this, I promise. You better not. Making promises you can't keep, eh, Miles? That'll end well. How's work going? You have any appointments today? Yes, one this evening. It's been a bit slow lately, but pretty soon it'll be debutante ball season, and all the Gascon grand dames will need their hair done. <laughs> you sure I can't convince you to let me give you a little trim? You've been looking awfully scruffy lately. Look it up. That's the point. I've got no need to go peacocking around town. You're the only girl for me. I like it when you're clean cut. It brings out your eyes. The way my eyes have been looking lately, I think it's best to keep them hidden. What a dick. What's that you're reading? It's a collection of short stories by James Penstrope. It was just published earlier this month. Any good? Oh, yes. I love his work. He's been publishing a new serial in Brentwell magazine. I can't nice. wait to read it. Perhaps we both can together? I think you'd enjoy him. Lately, I haven't been able to concentrate on a page for more than five minutes without nodding off. Hmm. That is a pity. We're kind of like a fuddy duddy here. Song you sang last week at the Rutherford stuck in my head. You were amazing. Thank you, Miles. That was a lovely evening. I always enjoy it when Joseph brings out his violin and we can relive the old days. Certainly nicer than when he spends hours telling the exact same story whenever you visit. <laughs> they were very glad to see you, you know. It's probably the most fun I've had in months, to be honest. They've invited us for dinner again in a couple of weeks, if you're feeling up to it. Let's do it. I. I hope I am. I'll let you get back to your book. All right, well, let's go meet Upton. Have a lovely day, Addie. Don't work yourself too hard, dear. All right, so we got a little map here. We got the ruined coffee house. We got Chumley over here. Guys gone. There's a lion. Ah, the Ruin Coffee House. Worst Java in Lamplight City, but there's no better place to overhear all the rumors and gossip in town. Just make sure you don't get too close to the other patrons. Discretion was never your forte. This place is fucking gross. Huh? Not in much of a hurry to clean up in here, are they? Uh, best avoid that one. He looks like he might tip over at any moment. Reminds me of when I was alive. Ah, <laughs> good times. Self-Portrait as a Desperate Man by B. Calvert. <laughs> a bit like looking in the mirror, isn't it, Miles? Good dick. Dr. Tennyson's Vigor Pills. Absolutely guaranteed to restore vitality, youth, and vigor or your money back for use by men only. These things seem to have had a spike in popularity recently. Green's sulfur soap. Beautified sulfur soap. Leaves you smelling fresh as a daisy. <laughs> Talk about false advertising. I couldn't get a date for a week after using that stuff. Dr. W. S. Sales Wonder Tonic. Everybody's got tonics. The best and safest medicine for both gentlemen and ladies. Prevents consumption, general weakness, feverishness, indigestion, constipation, diarrhea, loss of appetite, flatulence, and head pain. They should also it? mention that it prevents breathing, heartbeats, and being alive. 
Simon Banks. Professional chimney sweep. Services start at two coppers per hour. Inquire at 305 Merrick Lane. I'm sure he's a Step in time. Urchin, but thankfully, your chimney is clean. Professor Xander Colt Tit the Third's emulsified soporific, available at all discerning pharmacies. Yeah. I really don't know why you think taking that rat piss every night is a good idea for him. All that metal and tubing just to serve a hot cup of coffee? Yeah. Seems like they have a little something for everyone in here. The specialty house brews. These are definitely not coffee. She's running back and forth at lightning speed. Clearly, she dips into the coffee supply. Huh. A young woman holding a guitar. Completely the wrong way, I might add. Just one of many patrons contributing to the oppressive thug in here. Judging by the sooty apron, this man is either a metal worker, a chimney sweep, or just really lazy when it comes to washing. Yeah, could be both. Asleep at a coffee house. One of life's little ironies. It's kind of funny. If this is how they store their coffee beans, it's probably a better idea to ask for tea. <laughs> He's missing his left arm below the elbow. How do you suppose that happened? He and his friend are having quite the conversation. I bet it's really boring. What do we got here? Okay, where well, there's Constance Upton. If it isn't my old friend, up to no good. Hello, Florida. It's good to see you. How did you get them to let you in here? It's rather simple, really. The owner and I have an understanding. Well, because she's a woman, he she's not in there? Allowed in coffee houses, and ah. I don't report his unsavory business practices to Cheek Snelling. Sounds like a good deal. What sort of unsavory business practices are we talking about? Oh, we haven't got time to get into that now. But take some advice. Don't order anything that isn't water. I got your message. What's going on? It's time for you to join the big boys again, Fordham. Your days of finding lost cats are over. So stop teasing me and tell me what it is. What's already. we got? We got some good? Know Madame Laura Dupre? Yeah, she's dead. We just read it out in the paper. She's one of those Gascon Grand Dams, isn't she? That's right. I'm surprised you've heard of her. I didn't think you cared about those types of people. Mm, I, I don't. don't. But Adelaide has several of them as clients. She gets paid to pretend to care about their lives, and I get to hear the sort of details. Madame Dupre died the day before yesterday. Her funeral was held this morning. Oh, My condolences. But halfway through the service, the mourners heard a loud knocking coming from inside her coffin. <laughs> no she shit. dead? Apparently not. Nearly interred alive, although her doctor swears she had no pulse. Dupre's son Andrew was quick to suspect foul play. He accused a man named Albert Martin, and the police arrested him. So where do I come in? Sounds like the case has already been solved. I strongly suspect that Martin is innocent. He's innocent, I tell you. He's innocent. Been having used black magic on Dupre. The police oh, feel they magic, have huh? evidence to convict, so they're not bothering to investigate any further. You're going to look into it and see if I'm right. Then find the person who was really behind this. Oh, excuse me. Has Madame Dupre recovered from her ordeal? I'm afraid not. Apparently, she's been catatonic since they pulled her out of the coffin. How unfortunate. I don't blame her. If you'd like to question Mr. Martin, he's being held at the Bow Street Jail. Or you could take a look around his house. It's at 451 Compton Street in Worcester. And the Dupre home? That's at Emmeline and Comtesse, right across from the old Angeline convent. It's also possible you might run into the police during your investigation, since they're technically still on the case. Okay. Thanks for the warning. Was there anything you wanted to talk about before you get started? Yes. Yes, actually. I had a couple of questions. Well, all kinds then. of questions. Tell me about How yourself. You? Work as hectic as usual, and I'm spending my day off in here. But considering my home life is still a shambles, maybe this is the best place to be. I'm truly sorry about that. Don't be ridiculous. If it hadn't been for you, I'd still be chained to that philandering bastard. It hasn't been easy, but I'm much better off this way. Trust me. Anyway, work gives me something to focus on. I'm sure you can relate to that. Yes, and I'm grateful to you for getting me these case leads. I know you're taking a risk to do it. It's the least I can do. How about you? How's Adelaide? She's fine. So how do we get paid? So we're not getting paid? We're just doing this for free? The less said about it right now, the better, I think. 
I'm sorry to hear that. You can talk to me about it if you need to, although I'm probably not the best person to ask for relationship advice. Okay, cool, y'all. What I'm about Bill? There have been any developments regarding Bill's murder? Unfortunately, not. The department hasn't exactly been focusing on that case as a priority. The general attitude is that it was an accident. Bill died an honorable death in the line of duty. Would have been nice if they bothered saying that at the funeral. And of course, <laughs> there are still those who blame you for his death, Snelling being the first and foremost. I did shoot him. The man who really caused Bill's death is still out there. Yes, I know, but it looks like you're on your own if you want to find him. My hands are tied. I can only ask around so much before the higher ups get suspicious. Just don't give up. New Britannia may be a big city, but the criminal world is surprisingly close knit. If you find any connections or leads during your other cases, be sure and let me know. I'll do the same if I find anything out. See, she has a priority straight. You could learn a lot from up there. I wanted to go over the case with you. Okay, What's what have you got? Nothing. What do you know about Madame Dupre? Only what I've read about her in the paper. She's been married thrice, which I can empathize with, and she's extremely rich, which I can't. <laughs> What makes you think this Martin fellow is innocent? The fact that the only evidence is the word of Dupre's son. I've seen this sort of thing thousands of times, and I'm sure you did too. They're just looking for a scapegoat. You're the only person I know who can put it right. Upton's intentions are noble, but she has to realize this is just a drop in the ocean. Hey. That's enough about the case for now. Okay. That's it, I think. Then you'd better get back to it. We'll beat the system one... Well, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to help you find the flower shop burglar, but I suppose freeing an innocent man is a worthy diversion. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Okay, we got the Dupree Manor, the Bow Street Jail, 451 Compton, and we got our house. Let's go to the jail. Let's go see our boy, Martin, here. Fordham? Is that you? You look like something the cat spat up. Hello, Giles. It's lovely to see you, too. The guy's like, what the fuck's going on here? What brings you around the jail? I thought you'd quit being a detective. I'm looking to speak with Mr. Albert Martin. Oh, I see. Well, that's him in the first cell what there. you see, huh? What I'd do you say see? say what he's saying as quick as you can, though. He's headed for the gallows in the morning. What? Already? But what about a trial? No trial necessary when there's black magic involved. This little half-breed's already sealed his fate. What a fucking a charming dick, fellow, isn't he? He's watching you like a hawk. Looks liable to toss you in one of his cells if you try any funny business. I bet that's a direct line to the police department. You should make a rude noise into it when Giles isn't paying attention. <laughs> Either crime is low, or the police aren't doing their jobs very well. Not much in the way of comfort. No bed or even a bucket. It's a good thing this place is meant for short stays. No bucket, huh? A fucking whip? Mr. Martin? Who are you? My lawyer? No, I'm actually here to help you. The name's Miles Fordham. I'm a private investigator. Yeah. How, how are you going to help me? I'm looking into the attack on Madame Dupre. I believe you're innocent. Oh, thank heaven. That's that's music to my ears. Yeah, you mind let's get some details out of here first. Friend, if it means saving me from the noose, I'll tell you nothing less than God's truth. Well, that's... An interesting choice of phrase for someone accused of using black magic. What about you, first of all? How did you end up in here? I was just minding my own business at home when the police showed up with no warning. They made some outrageous claims about me putting some sort of curse on Madame Dupre. The next thing I knew, I was here. Oh, Mama must be beside herself with worry. I just hope she's all right. Oh, Mama. What does your mother do, Mr. Martin? Uh, she helps people. I was hoping you'd be just hmm. a bit more specific. Yeah, it's a little vague. She provides spiritual help to those who seek guidance. It's a little bit better. She's a spiritualist. Mm, not quite. She's more like, how can I explain it? Uh, you know priestess. how a priest holds mass to spread the word of God to the people? My mother holds services and calls on the spirits to walk among us, providing healing and guidance. So she's a religious leader? 
If you want to give her that title, it would be the most appropriate. Hmm. And does this religion of yours have a name? You'd probably know it as voodoo, but it doesn't mean what you think it does. Well, this guy's just getting on late on us real quick. And portray us as evil when they have no idea. So you practice voodoo, do you? Are you making fun of me, Mr. Fordham? No, of course not. <laughs> Apologies if it seemed as though I was. It's just that the police are convinced that black magic was involved in Madame Dupre's... Which is why you're going straight to the gallows. Because that idiot son of hers knew about my mother, and like all bigoted fools, assumed that we're involved in devil worship in the black arts. But I can assure you that this is most certainly not the case, Mr. Fordham. Of course. I didn't mean to imply. Just... Uh, just forget it. Hmm. What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? Made him a little mad. What's to tell? She's a twisted, evil woman who got what was coming to her. Whoever attacked her deserves some sort of reward for the service they're doing the community. So it wasn't you, then? No. I'm innocent, Mr. Fordham. You have to believe me. I'm afraid you're not making that very easy right now, Mr. Martin. Right. Do you know anything about the circumstances of Madame Dupre's supposed death? No. I had nothing to do with it. Then why did her son accuse you? Probably because he's just as ignorant as she is. Ooh. What I meant was, how did her son know to accuse you? Have you had any contact with the family before? Yes, you could say that. Uh-oh, that gleam in his eye says it all. You see, I'm involved with Dupre's daughter, Juliet. Oh, Montgomery. he's banging Dupre the daughter. Dupre doesn't like that one bit. She, uh, she even threatened me once. Is that right? Yes. She might have everyone else fooled, but that woman is the devil incarnate. I, I can't understand how something so heartless and cruel could have spawned someone as pure and oh, loving as my dear Juliet. Aww, He's not really helping sweet. his case much, is he? Tell me about Juliet. She's wonderful. Such a beautiful, kind soul. She hasn't come to see me yet, but I'm sure that's because of all the confusion in the last few days. Juliet wouldn't believe for a second that I would be capable of harming her mother. I'm sure of it. You sure? How did you two get involved? We met at the university. Your classmates? <laughs> Hardly. They wouldn't allow someone like me to enroll there. Juliet studies botany. I work as an assistant in the greenhouse. We started talking, <laughs> and... Oh, she actually treated me like a, a person. Well, because you are a person, everyone homie. else, I was just the boy who fetched the test tubes. But Juliet oh. actually wanted to hear what I had to say. Had the same taste in books and art. Didn't just treat me like some piece of gardening equipment. She even shared some of her notes with me after I told her I was interested in botany as well. From hmm. there, things just got better. Ooh. I don't expect you to understand or approve, but that's how it happened. Oh, you'd be surprised. It doesn't sound too different to how my wife and I got together. Except I was a detective and she was a singer at a bar. And she's... Yes, Mr. Martin. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. How often is Juliet in the greenhouse? Every weekday, hmm. but I doubt she's there now. She's probably trying to find out where I am and working to have me released. Somehow, I wouldn't bet on that. <laughs> Alright, all so we're gonna go talk to Juliet. Wait, uh, before you go, would you do me a favor? Would you go see my mother at our house and give her a message? You're at 451 Compton Street, right? Yes, that's right. Could you tell her I said St. Rock's dog is barking? I suppose I could do that, yes. Oh, thank you. Whatever happened to a simple I love you? All right, we got quite a bit to do. Question to residents at the Dupre Manor. Speak to Juliet Montgomery at the university. Deliver a message to Albert Martin's mother. Alright, let's roll. So we've talked to the accused. Guess we should go check out the crime scene. You are aware this is private property, sir. Don't yes, begin that tone I'm with Miles me. Fordham, private investigator. I'm looking into the incident involving Madame Dupre. I assume this is she? You assume correctly, Mr. Fordham. My apologies, but I thought the police had already made an arrest. Yeah, That's well, right. we don't like but that there's arrest. There's still some doubt as to the man's guilt. 
May I ask your name, sir? I am Dr. Fellows, Madame Dupre's private physician. I'm afraid she is in no state to be answering questions at present. Are any other members of the family home? Her son, Mr. Montgomery, is in the entrance hall. I had to give him a mild sedative to settle his nerves, hmm. but he should be all right to converse. Well, yeah, well, mind, I'll have a look around. Your mom wakes up from the dead. You know what? Before we get started here, it's a good place to end for the day. So, drop a like if you haven't already, and drop a sub if you're new. Let's come out back and check out some Lamplight City. So, let's call this... The game is afoot. So, come on back. See you next time. I'm out.